This is Northcan Prepper, so here we are again. I need a variable capacitor for a magnetic loop antenna, so I'm going to make a trombone capacitor. This is just a prototype out of, out of coke cans or cylinders, I should say. I need a 26 picofarad to 472 picofarad, which will let me transmit from 7 megahertz to 30 megahertz on the magnetic loop. So, as you can see, we're at 33, uh, you know, it can take some fine-tuning, it may be lower, but it'll go all the way up as I slide it in. I could probably get a little more out of that. But I only need 472, but that's 679 right there. And you can get more if you wanted, but, um, that's not what I find really cool about this video. The fact is... A lot of people take cans and they make uh, stoves out of them. And there's always a problem of getting things to mesh together and stuff. I have the solution. I found an easy way to expand a can or a cylinder or anything. Get one that's appropriate to your size. I went to Harbor Freight and got this. And I put it in there and it will just open the can up. For example, let me show you. Um, you have to be careful because... You can split the can or crush it. Um, basically, I had to anneal it because I had a couple of failures. But you put the can in there, you slip it in as far as you want, and then it expands. Oh, here, let me show you. It expands apart. Wedges get driven in all the way on both sides. And we'll expand it. So if you put it in your can, or any cylinder. I may do a, a smaller can as well, but let me get this up real quick. <clears throat> Just put a wrench on that. Yeah, whatever. Put a wrench on that, and it'll expand as needed. That's as much as I get in my hand, but this is made for expanding tailpipes and cars. But it works really well for cans and. Uh, if you're making variable capacitors. So, I just want to point that out real quick. Because I thought that was a neat thing I could share. Because I haven't really found any, else way to, any other way to do it. Like I said, I put a pipe wrench on this end. And crushed it and it tore. Um, like I said, you have to anneal the can. Otherwise, it'll, uh, it'll tear up on you. But, that's how you make a variable capacitor. Or a trombone capacitor. Um, for ham radio in this case. Now... I suspect that it may be a little bit lossy and have losses, but that's okay because their capacitors, variable capacitors, are kind of expensive, and vacuum capacitors are really expensive. Like one in this range here, they probably run you about 100 to 150 bucks. So I don't want to pay that for an experimental loop I'm doing, but. I thought I'd point that out and let you guys know you can make a, a trombone capacitor. I've got two Diet Coke uh, cans. Um, like I said, this one's been expanded here. As you can tell, it's kind of weird, but it's expanded. And I've got wax paper in between them as a uh, separator. As I'm touching, I'm changing everything, of course. But basically, you could just do that and slide it up in there. And you have your variable capacitor. And the way I'm going to operate this remotely is I'm going to take two... Well, I'll show you in another video how I'm going to do that. That's kind of something else. But, there you go. So, I'm going to prep it. Please rate, subscribe, and look for more videos tomorrow when I get this thing all set up and built. The magnetic loop antenna. Or HF from an apartment. But, like, anyway, this is a capacitor. Uh, this will this will uh, cause an antenna to be resonant and... Capacitors are pretty important in that in that aspect for magnetic loops, but there you go. Uh, please rate subscribe. Have a great day everybody. Thanks. Lord's gonna pepper out